Hey guys, good day, and thank you for coming back to the next video. Hey, it's September 22nd, uh, 2020, and uh, I was recalling back about five years ago uh, the excitement around September 23rd, 2015. Uh, there was a couple people out there, I think mainly uh, some, some person that wrote a book called The Rapture Puzzle, and it was all about September 23rd, and we kept seeing all those September 23rd, 723 references uh, in the movies and TV shows, and we were all wondering something was going to happen. Of course, nothing happened. But here we are five years later, five uh, grace years later, the number five in the Bible means grace. So I really consider these past five years to be a grace period. But so today I'm just going to go through a couple things I've um, I've kind of come up with and found over the last um, few weeks. Most notably, I guess, is this cosmic event and I'm going to show you, um, I did a video, I guess my most watched video on my YouTube channel. If I go and look look there real quick, I search on my uh, most popular. The most popular video I've ever done is 127,000 views, and it's on Enoch 60. And I said it sounds like the sixth seal. And now that I've looked at it again, um, I actually created a, a document to study it. A while back and I noticed that I call, actually called it the cosmic event so it you know I started my my days watching you know trying to figure out what was going on with the return of Jesus with this with this really this early on prophecy from Bond's blog it was called it was called the cosmic event three days of darkness and this yeah so she spoke about this cosmic event back in November of 2013, almost seven years ago. And the way this thing worked is um, she was prophesying with a prophetic word about a cosmic event that would occur and that would be the beginning of it all. So um, I actually created a... Um, well, let me jump backwards. So this this prophecy speaks about a cosmic event. Then it, there, there's three days and then there's an earthquake and then there's three days of darkness. So this thing is really about three days of darkness, this this word from Bond's blog. And when I started reading about the three days of darkness from the modern prophets, I started to scour the Bible and I started to find all sorts of darkness events that are in the Bible. So this is a calendar we're going to go over here. I have some speculation here. I've tweaked the dates a little bit. This is this is just what I got up to date. It's just patterns and and biblical scriptures and Trying to just, you know, I'm not, uh, there's no thus saith the Lord or anything like that. But it's um, it's just my best guess at how this is going to play out. And of course, we we see through the the, the glass dark. We, we don't have a good picture of it. No one does. Um, so Enoch 60, here I got the, the chapter here. And Enoch chapter 60, there's various, it's like chapter 58 in some translations or it, the the wording really changes from trans. There's there's some discrepancies on the actual English translation, but I tried to go through and and pick out what the most e easily understandable modern English version was because you know there's this old English and all that kind of stuff mixed in and it's hard to read. But basically, Enoch sixty is this Enoch's jubilee year in his fiftieth year. He had a great he had a vision of a great violent agitation that causes a concussion, like a collision, in the heaven of heavens, way up in the sky in space, you know. And he claims this vision will occur. This vision occurred to him on the 14th day of the seventh month with Tishri 14, the day before the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, when Enoch was around, there was no Feast of Tabernacles, okay? That was later, but that's when it occurred. And the angel tells Enoch that on this date, the 14th day, of the seventh month, it's the end of the days of mercy. It's the end of the church age, okay, for those who walk on the face of the earth. And this particular year, if Enoch 60 is to be fulfilled this year, and it would land on the same date that he had the vision, then, even on the Enoch calendar, it would be October 2nd, Friday. Now, I looked at this and came to the realization, I think this is the Friday of the Swedish boy's Rapture vision, um, yeah, Swedish boys' vision of the rapture, where a select group of people, I say it's the remnant bride, 
It's a small group of the bride. It's not the bride, the 10% bride. It's the 1% bride are taken to the base of a mountain early 7 a.m. on a Friday morning. So the way that the chapter goes, it says in the 50th year, a jubilee year, which this year has to be if Jesus is going to return, the seventh month on the 14th day of the month in the life of Enoch, he had a parable and the heaven of heavens shook, shook violently and the powers of the Most High and the angels, thousands of thousands and myriads of myriads. That's two groups of angels. That's an angel set of thousands of thousands and another angel set of myriads and myriads. Same exact thing that's in Daniel 7 and Revelation 5 when they sing the new song. I think this event is Revelation 5 in my opinion. And everybody was agitated with a great agitation a huge event in the sky. In the Ancient of Days, it would be God the Father, sitting on a throne in glory with the angels and the saints standing around him, a great trembling came upon me, says Enoch. His loins were bowed down and loosened. This is what it says in Ezekiel 30, uh, 21. He fell on his face, and Michael, one of the holy ones, was sent to raise him up. And this is the part that I saw here, it says, And when he raised me, my spirit returned, for I was incapable of do enduring the vision of violence, its agitation, the concussion or collision of heaven. So the cosmic event that Bond has spoken about, many others have speak, spoken about it, they say it's going to be some kind of collision in the sky that's going to cause the skies to turn red. Then Michael said to me, Why are you so disturbed? And Michael said, Up, up until now has existed the day of mercy the church age. And God has been merciful, long-suffering towards those who dwell on the earth. He said, and when the day and the power and the punishment and judgment come, Psalm 50, which the Lord of Spirits has prepared for those who do not, who, who worship, who do not worship the righteous law, that would be Jesus is the word, the law, and for those who deny the righteous judgment, for those who take his name in vain, that day is prepared for the elect's covenant, a new covenant for the elect and the sinners and uh, and for sinners an inquisition so this to me is the cosmic event i feel certain of it at this point and whether it's this year it looks like we're given a date for it so what i did was i i took the calendar and this is my handwritten calendar guys and here right here let me just get this over here. Um, yeah. I hope you can see this, guys. This cosmic event looks to be right here, October 2nd. Now, the way this calendar works is the Gregorian dates are in the upper right-hand corner and the Hebrew dates are in the lower left-hand corner for each day. And we've done with, we're done with Tuesday today. So right here, Tishri 14, the 14th day, the cosmic event. And other people's Sabbath seeker says there's going to be a cosmic event. Then red skies. One, two, three days of red skies. And then three days of darkness, which is right here. That's October 5th, 6th, and 7th. Now, according to Edward Umling, the five foolish virgins are going to be cast into the darkness outside, which is these three days. So what I'm seeing here, there's my calendar right now. This is my gut feeling right here. Um, the Swedish boy's dream vision is going to occur this coming weekend. Speculation. The 25th, 26th, 27th. We're called to the mountain on the 7th, Tishri 7. 25th of September. The 1% remnants brought there. They're, they're there. They're told about the rapture. The floating up rapture on Sunday. They go home. They warn everybody on the 26th, the day that uh, that Jonathan Kahn and all those guys are going to be going out and having a big prayer meeting. And we'll, you know, if this does occur, then we who are at the mountain are going to try to break up and bust that party up and try to explain to everybody what's going to happen on the next day. And they're not going to believe you. They're going to think you're nuts. And then on Sunday, September 27th, would be the floating up rapture. Now, this is just speculation. Guys, and then we would see the colorful lights in the sky right here. That's leading up to the cosmic event. And then we have the cosmic event here. 
Then we have the red skies. Then we have three days of darkness. And this is all during the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles is this week right here, this whole week, where the Lord will tab, we're going to tabernacle, tabernacle among with the Lord. And then when that's over with, lo and behold, we have October 11th, which is right here. October 11th and October 12th is the day that Babylon fell in the Old Testament with the handwriting on the wall. And that's the day that Dana saw the rock come flying out of there and hit the water. Tishri 23. Just like John chapter 8 with Jesus. I did a video about that. And then we got these two weeks in October. And you can see Pastor Dana's dream on my YouTube. You can read all about Pastor Dana's dream. Go to my video and see that. It's um, part one, I think. And during these two weeks, Pastor Dana sees all the politicians' heads explode. And then during those two weeks, uh, the, all the Hananias, the false prognosticators, the everything's going to be wonderful, the MAGA preachers, their heads are going to explode and their tongues are going to bite off. And they're all going to be exposed. Because when the rock hits the water, the USA is going to be just demolished. We don't cease to be a nation, but it's, it's, a, big, it's a big hit. And then later, we have the 17th day of the second month. I think there's going to be a rapture on that day. And this is the day that Dana, this is the, Dana has a November dream here. And this is in November now. And he has a November dream where on November 3rd, election day, he sees the finger. Remember, he saw the finger rotating clockwise. And then he saw the finger go counterclockwise. I don't know what that is, whether that's storms on the east and west coast. I don't know what. Time? I don't know. But the next day is the equivalent day where the ark door shut and the rains began. So with all this, I see multiple departures up here, Friday, September 25th, if this is the case. Um, I see the rapture, uh, a, a translation of the 1% remnant. They come back, they're here, and then the five, five wise virgins, the 5% wise virgins leave on the 27th. Cosmic event, the five foolish versions a few days later during the darkness, cast in the out of darkness, and then there's a rapture of the guests after 40 days from the 25th of September to November 4th is 40 days, and that's a fourth departure event. That's what I see for all this, guys. You know, it's just speculation. You guys can download these documents and um, keep track of them yourself, see what happens. Um, let me go back to... So I explained this cosmic event thing and that really sets the stage for everything because the days of darkness follow that so guys if you go to my if you go to my google drive and I'll, I'll leave a link to my google drive um i have a bunch of things here i've recently done i'm just going to kind of open them up and just speak to a few of them there's a thief in the night rapture I've, I've spoken about this many times and i know you guys have seen this before but Let's just play this for a minute. To the end, the end was at the door. Uh, began to see buildings, uh, buildings in the city that I was a part of at that time where I lived uh, that are now there, triangular. The monetary structure have a mark on their hand to oh. law. Uh, people was, that was completely removed. Uh, again, there weren't local law enforcement agencies, but it was more of a, a kind of a military or militia. It seemed like martial law. Yeah. Uh, people were greatly frightened. One thing I remember that I will never forget was um, that little babies had just uh, disappeared for a period of time in this dream. They were gone. No, no little babies from, you know, newborn. Where did they go? Where did all the babies go? They just disappeared. Uh, they were just yeah. gone. Yeah, they had just disappeared. Many, many mothers were very frightened. A lot of toddlers had disappeared. Uh, and then a period of time into the... Okay, so... We all know about this. I've spoken about this many times. So this is a document, you guys. I really would, um, I kind of changed it around a little bit. Download this one-page document and just go through it logically with the scriptures. People have a tendency to take Jesus, the words that he says, and they just sort of take it with a grain of salt. Let me read. Let's read Matthew 19. Jesus said, Let the little children alone. Do not hinder them from coming to me, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. So I wrote here, the question is, the, well, the, the, the statement is, the little children belong to the kingdom of heaven, not their earthly parents. So when 
So when their earthly parents are going to be judged and there's going to be wrath coming upon the earth, Jesus is going to come take the little children because they belong to the kingdom of heaven. And that's what Jesus says. He says here, Jesus says, how dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. He doesn't say how dreadful it will be for the little children. He doesn't say how dreadful it will be for the, um, the, the prepubescent males or the you know, 25-year-old whatever. It's pregnant women and nursing mothers. Why? Well, let's see what it says in Luke. Let's see what society says in Luke. So at the start of the tribulation, right, or the time of sorrows, whatever, a dreadful event for pregnant women and nursing mothers will occur. And let's let's see how Jesus describes this event. So while he's carrying the cross to Golgotha, Jesus said, the daughters of Jerusalem were weeping. He says, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, for weep for yourselves and for your stolen away children. I added that in there. For behold, the days are coming when they, when society, they will say, blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say, fall on us to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills, cover us. This is the sixth seal. Jesus is quoting John's verses out of the sixth seal. So by the time we get to the sixth seal, society will be saying that women who never were pregnant, who never were, who weren't nursing their babies, Society will say how blessed they are. So my question is, why would society say that women without children are considered blessed? Well, it's because those women didn't have their babies stolen from them or, or taken from their bellies. Why is it a good thing to not have any children at the start of the time of sorrows? Because they were taken away from them. They were supernaturally raptured. Okay, Did the Lord make good on his promise? to come as a thief in the night to those who are not watching for his return and steal away the children as prophesied by a myriad of prophets. Revelation 3.3, 3, if you will not wake up 90% of the church, 95% of the church, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what hour I will come against you. He's speaking to his own followers. He's not speaking to a bunch of lukewarm Antifa or BLM people. They're not his, they're not his people. Okay, they're going to receive God's wrath, but they're not going to see this type of, well, they might see their kids taken too, but this is to the church here, guys. Revelation 3 is to the church. You know, the, the seven churches, this is the church of Sardis, the, the frozen chosen church. Okay. I've said these verses many times. You, I'm not even going to go through them. But you guys can see Hosea 5, Hosea 9, Ephraim's glory shall fly away like a bird. Okay, I will take the children till there's none left. Then God will give them a miscarrying womb and dry breasts. And you, people read these Old Testament prophecies like there's some old myth or fable, like they have no meaning whatsoever. There is huge meaning when God says, I'm going to give these lukewarm believers a miscarrying womb and dry breasts. That's why Jesus says how dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers, because the little ones belong to the kingdom of heaven, not their earthly parents. Jeremiah 50, surely the little ones of the flock shall be torn away. Psalm 80, rescue, snatch away the weak and the needy. Micah chapter 1, okay, verse 16, shave your heads in sorrow. For the children you love will be snatched away. That's the NLT version. Make yourselves bald as a vulture, for your little ones have been removed from you. This is the Young's literal translation. All the other English translations say exiled. When in the Hebrew, the word exiled is not used, the translators over the years, they just assume Micah was fulfilled in 600 BC with ancient Judah being conquered and exiled by Babylon, so they just simply add exile in there. If I go to Micah 1.16 on Bible Gateway and look at all the translations, all of them except the Young's literal translation say exiled when they weren't exiled because that didn't happen back then. Micah was not fulfilled in times past. don't mean to go off on that tangent, but it's 
It's a concept that's just impossible to explain to the church people and the pastors, it seems like. Okay. All right. Enough of that one. You guys can download that one. I've done videos on that 20 times. Uh, let me go back here. Um, okay. Um, let me see here. Here's Second Estros chapter 6. This is the signs of the Lord coming. So when the Lord's going to begin his end time judgment events, he says, I will begin to come near to visit those who live on the earth. When I begin to examine, judge those who unjustly afflicted harm in their cruelty. When the humiliation of Zion is complete. See, I think this, the sons of Zion or something before the foundation of the world. It says, when the humiliation of the sons of Zion is complete and they are revealed, and I put for who they really are, remember the sons of God will be revealed at some point. When the seal is placed upon the age that is about to pass away, remember the age, the day, last day of mercy from Enoch 60? I think this is, like you said, the 14th day of the seventh month. Okay? Ignore this Rosh Hashanah, obviously. That's another thing. Let me let me go back to that right now. What, what Why didn't Rosh Hashanah happen? Why didn't anything happen? Well, in a it looks like we're in a um, a jubilee year. I have it here somewhere. Yeah, here it is, right here. So it looks like that the new year, the new year, is recognized for a jubilee year, and we are in a jubilee year. Jesus is going to return. I'm just going to make that bold statement. This has to be a jubilee year because when a jubilee year occurs. Uh, Things that have been stolen from people are given back. Here's Leviticus 25. You shall count seven weeks of years, seven times seven years, so that the time of the seven weeks of years shall give you 49 years. Then you shall sound, then you shall sound the loud trumpet on the tenth day of the seventh month, on the day of atonement. You shall sound the trumpet throughout the land. And you shall consecrate to the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout the land of its inhabitants. And it shall be a jubilee for you when each of you shall return to his property and each of you shall return to his clan. This is when everything gets set back right again every 50 years or every 49. This is the start of the 50th year. And during a jubilee year, the new year is recognized on Rosh, Hash Rosh Hashanah the new year is recognized on Yom Kippur, not Rosh Hashanah, not Tishri 1. So that could explain why nothing has happened a few days ago. And even Torah calendar shows it. The 10th day of the 7th month, it's called a Rosh Hashanah Jubilee. And that's what they're claiming this year is. They even say it's a Jubilee year. I don't know how they know that. And see, in Luke 4, when Jesus came the first time, he quoted from Isaiah, Isaiah 61, and he said at his first coming, first coming, it was to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, which is a jubilee year. And then he rolled up the scroll like the sky will roll up like a scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And then they wanted to throw him over a cliff. So therefore, it would seem that his second coming will also be a year of jubilee. And during this jubilee year, the new year will be recognized on the Day of Atonement, which is the 28th. Okay. So that's the deal. It appears nothing happened on Rosh Hashanah because we got to wait till the Jubilee. Uh, we got to wait till the 10th day of the seventh month before we can do that. All right. That explains that. Um, so I was looking at the second Estras. So my thought here is this should be changed to September 28th is that it says, when the seal is placed upon the age that is about to pass away, September 28th, then I will show these signs, okay? These are the signs that the Lord's going to show beginning with September 28th. The books shall be opened before the face of the firmament. That means the, the sky is going to roll up like a scroll. And all shall see my judgment together. On the planet. They're going to see planet X, the second sign of Revelation 12. Whatever it is. I don't know. This is where it gets really wild, guys. So when this begins to occur, infants 
a year old will speak with their voices. Little babies will talk, you know, the ones that would have been aborted maybe. And pregnant women will give birth to premature babies three and four months old, and they will live and dance. So women who are pregnant and their babies are only four or five months old in the womb, they're three and four months premature or five months premature, they're going to be born premature, and they're going to sing and dance. Now, won't that be quite a sight? <laughs> Fields, the earth that were sown together, will suddenly be unsown. This is when the earth's going to rip apart, Isaiah 24. And full war at warehouses, it will suddenly be found empty. Then a trumpet will sound with a blast. When all hear, they will suddenly be terrified. In that time, friends, allies, will make war. So we all go to war. We're all just dropping nukes on everybody. The earth and all those who live in it will be terrified. The sources of the rivers will stand still so that they don't run for three hours. So time appears to stop for three hours. Now that occurred. When did we see a three-hour event of darkness? Well, when Jesus died on the cross, the earth was dark for three hours. And that guy, um, whatever his name is, um, Edward Umling, had a word about the three hours. So this appears, this river event probably occurs on Tishri 14, which is October 2nd, that Friday, two couple Fridays from now. Then everyone who is left behind after all these things have occurred, that I foretold, they will be saved in a rapture. I added that, I think November 4th. Then these people who are left behind will see my salvation, that's Jesus, Yeshua, and the end of my age. They will see the people who had been taken up, the wise versions earlier, and who haven't tasted death from their birth. That's the first fruits translated ones. Those who reside in the earth. Then it says, those who reside in the heart of the earth, that would be dead people, will be changed and converted to a different spirit. We're going to have dead people come back to life. But it's not the resurrection at the last trumpet, though. Daniel 12, 2 makes a, uh, first, a version of this. Then evil will be erased and grief extinguished. Faith will flourish because there's a revival going on when you have your dead grandmother walking into a room with your lukewarm family and she's going to talk about Jesus. Your family will all be saved. For that relative of yours who committed suicide 30 years ago, maybe she'll come back and she'll explain what happened and talk about Jesus. So these are the list of the things, guys. You can look at that. Look at all this. So that's that's the signs of the end of the age that occurs, which I think, around September 28th. A lot of stuff in there in 2nd Estros. Um, here's a Micah Bible study. I'm not going to go through that. Guys, you've seen that before. Jesus, uh, uh, new moon now. Um, just kind of go through this. Oh, <laughs> this is another one. Okay. If you go to the book... Well, let me just read this. In the book of Genesis, the biblical patriarch, his name is Jared, was the sixth in the ten pre-flood generations between Adam and Noah. He was the son of Mahalalel, sorry guys, and the father of Enoch, and he lived 962 years old. The biblical text, the biblical text in the book of Jubilees implicitly, uh, I can't say that word, but it means what the name means. The name is derived from the root word Yared, which means to descend. It's epidemiology or something like that. Anyway, because of his days, the it says, because in his days, in the days of Jared, the angels of the Lord descended to the earth. The name also means rose, servant, and one who rules. So Ecclesiastes, what has been done is what will be done. And what will be done is what has been done is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. So, 5,500 years ago, in the days of Jared, the watchers, let's, let's read it here. Okay, so Jubilees 4, Berechiel bare Mahalalel, sorry, a son in the third week of the sixth year. And he called his son Jared, for in the days of Jared, the angels of the Lord descended upon the earth, those who are named watchers, that they should instruct the children of men, that they should do judgment and uprightness on the earth. And Jared took for himself a wife and named her 
Baraka, interesting name. So when Jared lived 5,500 years ago, roughly, that's when the angels came down from heaven. Now, could the modern day Jerob, Jared, I'm sorry, when he takes his place, could the fallen angels come down? What has been done is what will be. Okay. Then we go to Hosea. This is another wacky one, guys. It's been ignored for some reason. The prophet Hosea references an Assyrian king named Jerub with a B. The Bible commentators and scholars say there is no historical record of any king from Assyria named Jerub. They say they have no idea who Hosea is referencing. That's because they think that Hosea was fulfilled 2,700 years ago. They haven't caught on to that yet. Perhaps, and I just say, perhaps this king never existed because he didn't. <clears throat> and this prophecy is describing a future leader. And it is. Here, I have a picture here. Jared Kushner is practicing doing peace agreements. He's done a bunch of them now. So Hosea 5 says this. When Ephraim saw his sickness after the little ones were taken, and Judah saw his wound, then Ephraim went to the Assyrian and sent to King Jerob. Yet he could not heal you. He could not cure your wound. Okay? But there was no King Jerob 2,700 years ago. There was no rapture of the little ones 2,700 years ago. It's going to be future. So King Jerob is a future entity. A great king, some of the translators say. Now, Hosea 10, we hear more about this King Jerob. We hear that he swears falsely in making a covenant. And the inhabitants of Samaria shall fear. Remember, Samaria is the capital of Ephraim, Ephraim, which is Washington, D.C. Shall fear because of the caths of Beth Haven. And the people shall mourn over it. And these idols shall be carried unto the Assyrian for a present, a gift to King Jerob. Ephraim shall rece receive shame. And Israel church shall be ashamed of his own counsel. They're going to give this guy, you know, a, a an image that people are going to worship. This is just right out of Revelation 13. And his name is King Jerob. And don't tell, I don't, I can't figure out what's how he comes into power, but he's like a viceroy. I think in the beginning, he has good intentions. He's just like, he's the son of perdition. He starts off with good intentions, but he just fails miserably. If you go to Zechariah 11, he's referred to as the shepherd who took leadership over a flock doomed to be slaughtered. Go read Zechariah 11. That's who it is. Okay. Uh, Edward Umbling, he's putting forth a lot of interesting prophecies. Here's a prophecy the other day. Basically, the United States, Tophet, is a place of child sacrifice in ancient Israel. <laughs> 